So we have a King's 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery, and I want to know what's inside. What cells are they using inside? And I know you want to know as well. Now, previous version of this battery was advertised as pouch cells inside here, but the newer version, which is this one, is advertised as prismatic cells. So I want to pull this open and confirm that the way they are now using prismatic cells in this battery. So let's get into it. Let's pull this apart and see what's inside. A few moments later. So I've cut around the lid here with my oscillating tool. Now I didn't bother videoing that because who's going to want to see me doing that? You want to see what's inside it, right? So I've got it cut. So let us have a look. I haven't actually lifted the lid off this yet. Maybe if I turn it around. So we're going to both see what's inside this together. Okay. Yes, we do have, I'm glad I'm seeing that, Let's see if we can keep this lit up. We do have some prismatic cells in there. So that is, that is a good thing. So I've taken the lid off now. One thing that I notice is these terminal bolts here that go onto the terminals for our wires, those bolts were extremely tight to get off and that is a good thing so they were very very firm very secure and then elastic over them to stop any vibrations so i've got to give it a thumbs up for the tightness of the bolts for neatness that's actually not too bad that's actually pretty good they haven't gone overboard with the elastic so there's a bit of elastic on this side this and a bit this side which i've already got a knife in and loosened it so it's not smeared in Celastic that I can see so far. And what's on there is certainly adequate to hold this battery into place. Uh, okay, let me pull it out. Let's pull the sails out and have a look. I managed to get it out in one piece without doing any damage to the box. And you can see they haven't filled it full of sil uh, silicon. And the silicon they've used, the uh, quantity is more than adequate to hold it into the box. So I'm quite happy with that. It makes it easier to get out. And we're just not full of just untidy rubbish silicon. You can see here that they have used two blocks and left the pressure relief valves uncovered. So that is another thumbs up. That is a good thing. So they thought about the pressure relief valve and when they're, where they're positioning these um, mounting blocks in here like that i'm going to check to see we're looking for a temperature sensor which potentially is is this here so i want to see where this goes and i want to test the tightness of these nuts here so let's remove all of this let's have a look so i just removed this card out the way so we can have a look at the cells and i'm well, I'm kind of seeing a little bit of deja vu with the strapping. So if we have a look here, the cell actually doesn't look too bad. It's got a slight, you can kind of see that slight little bulging. But I have heard with the prismatic cells, if they're not clamps, clamped, they can bulge. So leave a comment below about that. So if they're not in a clamp situation, they have a potential bulging. So... Uh, that I've, by what I've researched, isn't uncommon for cells. But what I'm starting to see here is we're seeing the corners here with a little bit of damage. Now, whether that's for over tightening or because of the cells bulging, not sure. This is a little bit of a problem here. So have a look at this one here. So we've got some denting. So I can get the right angle. So this has got a big dent in it to the point where it's actually split open the uh, insulation around that. So that's that's a nice. I'll get a straight edge on that, and we can. In fact, let me do that right now. As you can see, how how warped or kinked or whatever you want to call that that battery like that. So it is definitely definitely a problem. 
with the battery. This one's okay on the cell, but this one here has definitely got a huge gap in here. So just here, just here has a, it's been damaged. It looks like it's been damaged and spun round maybe. Not sure, but that shouldn't be there. So that's a little bit of a concern. And over this side, we've got a slight little bit of swelling here. But again, I don't, don't know what is uh, deemed to be acceptable on swelling on these. So other than this here, um, I'm, I'm pretty well happy with what I'm seeing. Very neat. They've, they've put the time to cut this through to get the cables through here like this to keep the neatness of it. So it's definitely, they've taken a little bit of extra care to try and get the cable management nicely done. You can see they've got a zip tie around there to uh, keep everything so it's just not flopping around. So, so attention to detail for the uh, price of these. I'm actually quite liking uh, what I see in that aspect of it. Right, so I found some QR codes and they're not scratched off, which is always handy. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to uh, bring up. Let's see if I can get my phone to focus on that QR code for you. So if you've got a QR code reader, then uh, be my guest. Please scan this and uh, let me know what you find in there. So we've also got this... Uh, sticky here so looks like um, the 6th of the 3rd 2024 this battery was potentially either made or or uh, the pack assembled there's no indications of, of wear and tear or anything of a second hand cell so potentially they probably are new are new cells so looking at the bus bars going between the um, the cells here, we can see the thickness of that. So what I'll do is I'll get the vernier gauges and we'll have a look and see how thick that is. The temperature sensor was here, so that was stuck down on top of that terminal there. So it was fixed well enough to be able to read the temperature of uh, that terminal. So I, I think that's uh, quite adequate for... Uh, what we're getting in the battery here. I'm actually liking, with the exception of the damage on this cell here, I'm actually liking what I'm seeing so far. So looking at the BMS, and there is the data sheet. Let me get this to focus. There we go. There is the data sticker on the BMS. You're welcome again to uh, scan that and do a translation. Okay, so I've got the vernier gauges out, so we'll turn that on. And yeah, we're calibrated. That's always handy. We're on millimetres. So let's see if we can uh, just under the wire there, move that out the way and go down like this. And we're going to, have to lock that in its place. Lock it if I can get that to come out. That's how thin that uh, is. So we're looking at 1.1 millimetre in thickness of that plate and well you engineers electrical engineers out there that know what your resistance is for your aluminium that look like that they are aluminium um, I'm not sure what that current rating would be for that plate I'm not that much of an expert let's just see if they're going to calibrate back to zero yes it does so 1.1 mil thickness in that plate so just to Double check, I did another one here. The best I can with one hand, we can see we've got 1.2 mil thickness in that plate. So we've got between 1.1 and 1.2 mil in thickness of the plates there. Okay, let's do it. I know you want to know, I want to know what our, our cell voltages and see if we've got some balancing right. So our first cell here is 3.398, so 3.398. Four. Our second cell is 3.347, so nearly 3.35. Now our third cell, I just need to move this across here to run these two. So our third cell here 
is sitting at 3.347 and our fourth cell here is sitting at 3.34 so there is the voltages of each one of those cells I want to ask a question on one of my other battery videos I did a cell voltage test and I had someone come back and saying that you can't do a balance of the cells by voltage unless the voltage of the battery is at 14 volts so while it's right at its premium charge so to get it to 14 volts you'd have to have it plugged into a battery charger so my way of thinking that that's not actually correct I would want to see these bell these cells um, come down and just sit resting after they've been charged to see what the balancing is but I could be wrong because I've got a lot of time and a lot of years like 30 years experience on lead acid batteries with off-grid but lithiums for me well they're still kind of new so I could be wrong with that statement and that that um, person could be perfectly right in what they're saying so let me know when you're doing a, a capacity or a um, balancing test of each cell are we measuring the cell voltage once it's reached 100% and we've taken it off the charge? Or should we, re, we, re, should we be reading the cell voltages while it's on the charge at once it's reached to its 100%? Let me know in the comments below. So there you have it. There is the battery teardown video of the 100 amp hour King's Lithium battery we can validate it's definitely got the prismatic cells in these batteries now so they've moved from the pouch cell over to the prismatic cell which is good mind you there's nothing wrong with the pouch cells either but for shock and vibration being in the caravan this is probably a little bit better so if you like the video give it a thumbs up leave a comment below and wait for the next awesome video that will be coming out on the off-grid channel How long do I hold this for? Like, I've got to hold a, like a flat straight pause so I can do a fade out at the end without like moving the camera. But like, how long do I hold it for, Glenn? Yeah, I, I need a coffee. Whew, the fumes getting to me.